Hi, and welcome to this live reading from Road to the Mansfield by C.B. Lawrence, and this is presented by Itsy Bitsy Book Bits. Chapter 1, Summer 1927, Alouette Parish, Louisiana. On the third night of the last full moon of summer, Francois Ray Rebideau stood poised to kill. Knee-deep in the warm, fresh water of the bayou, her four-pronged gig raised over her shoulder. She aimed at a pair of red eyes the size of her baby brother's belly button. Thwack! The barbed blades sliced through the back of the fat bullfrog and straight to the other side. Dat one's for mama. She prodded and peeled her catch from the spikes, then dropped it in a feed sack with the others before yanking the drawstring tight. One more and she'd have enough to buy Mama the coughing herbs from Madame ben ben Beringer and have a little money left over for the general store. Madame Beringer loved frog legs almost as much as Daddy had. Every time Francie brought big fat legs to trade, she'd say, Francie, I declare you the best frogger in all of Alouette Parish. It was true, too. Daddy taught her how to catch frogs with her bare hands at only four, year, four years old. You smarted in that old frog, he'd say. She'd cried the first time she saw Daddy smash one's head with a hammer, then cut and clean the legs. Dear born to die, chair. By the time she turned six, she caught frogs all summer long, even during the daytime. Quiet as a dragonfly on the breeze, she crept along the bank in the shallow waters and thought about the good times with Daddy. When Mama didn't need her to help around the house or to clean and cook the fish Francie had caught for supper, she'd be with him. They'd check his traps for raccoon and mink to skin and sell. They'd catch crawfish, shrimp, and crappie. Then they'd set up shop down at the pier. Drive a hard bargain share. Don't get soft or they'll take you for all you're worth. The moon rose higher and higher in the sky, and the sack weighed heavier on her shoulder. Thick bayou mud sucked at Francie's shoes. One more chunky frog and she could go home. You gotta be out, dear. You gotta be somewhere. She held her kerosene lamp up high and scanned the reeds for red eyes. There. The biggest bullfrog yet set Francie's heart to racing. Madame Berger would pay extra for this meaty fella. She stuck her gig in the mud. Only a hand catch would do. She wanted to keep it alive and fresh for as long as possible. Careful not to break that beam of light currently freezing her prey, she silently edged closer. Quick as a cat, she shot her hand out to snatch the frog. But another red-eyed beast had the same idea. A cottonmouth snake struck out a half second too late and missed the frog and Francie's hand by less than an inch. Shoo, Lord! Francie stumbled backward, holding her lantern in one hand, the prized frog in the other. She shoved the frog down her shirt, grabbed the gig, and backed her way up the bank, keeping her light high. The slimy, muddy body hopping and struggling against her naked belly did nothing for her nerves. Mace, that was too close, she said to her catch as she dropped him into the bag with the others. She untied her canoe from a big cypress tree and paddled toward home taking great care to look out for more, for more snakes or, heaven forbid, a gator along the way. Francie always thought about Daddy on nights like this, every night, truth be told, and how he'd, have, how he'd have loved her story about the snake. His eyes would have twinkled. He would have swirled her around in a dance. hi he, that's my girl, Francie. A few months before Francie's 10th birthday, Daddy went to jail. Mama said Daddy whooped some society gentleman something fierce when he refused to pay what he owed, so they threw him in a jail up in An Angola. She and Mama struggled to get by for two years. Francie hunted and traded. Mama sewed beautiful dresses for the fine ladies of New Orleans until finally Daddy came home. Francie had been so happy to see him. She thought for sure he'd make their lives whole again, but when he returned, he didn't laugh or sing or dance anymore. The twinkle had gone out. He drank moonshine noon to night. Not today, Cher, he'd say when she asked him to go trapping or sing with her. 
Mama and Daddy fought like two dogs over a ham bone until one day he left and didn't come back. Francie waited for weeks, months, for him to come home. It had been over three years and she still caught herself watching for him to walk up the drive. She blamed Mama for chasing him off. Mama said, man can't be trusted to do right by their women, Francie. Best you learn that now. It didn't matter anyway after her baby brother arrived about six months later. Her daddy was gone. She had another mouth to feed. And that was that. Francie stopped going to school so she could provide for the family, then helped Mama sew on those nights when she fell asleep with a, with a half-finished dress in her lap or, more recently, took to coughing and shaking so bad she couldn't thread a needle. Francie saw the kerosene lamp on the dock up ahead. Her tummy grumbled and her mouth watered, thinking of the frog leg supper she would have tonight. Almost home. The one-room shack, weather-beaten and worn, stood back a ways from the bayou. The roof had a leak or two despite Mama and Francie's best efforts. The dock had broken boards and the baby had nearly fallen through. And when the wind howled, they huddled together hoping the house wouldn't blow over. A wraparound porch helped shade the family from the scorching Louisiana sun and the windows and doors were strategically placed for a cross breeze. Still, the fetid air and relentless humidity of the bayou could drive a person crazy, so Francie simply ignored it. No sense of complaining. Francie pulled her pierogi to the dock to tie it up tight. She didn't need to learn that lesson again. She threw the bag of frogs on the rickety boards, dashed up the ladder, and into the house. Mama snored in her sewing chair with a red satin dress in her lap. More dresses hung on a clothesline stretched across the corner of the room. Bolts of fabric, spindles of trim and lace, and thread of every color surrounded her. A stark contrast to her near white, sickly pallor. Her baby brother, now an active toddler, had been tied to his crib. Mama couldn't chase him around, so while Francie hunted, he stayed trapped like one of Daddy's raccoons. He slept now, but she could see his little red face and puffy eyes. He'd probably screamed for hours after she left. Poor baby. Without waking Mama, she took the frogs to the front porch and cleaned them right quick under the moon and lamplight. Nine pair for Madame Berenger, three pair for Francie and Mama to share. Her job done, Francie returned to the house to do the frying. Her heart dropped when she saw the empty bottle on the counter next to the icebox. Mama must have fed the baby the buttermilk she needed for soaking the frog legs, and she couldn't cook without it. A wave of frustration washed over her, tightening her throat and rushing tears behind her sapphire eyes. She'd been up since dawn taking care of the baby and Mama, cooking, cleaning, and hunting, but still she'd be going to bed hungry tonight. Again. Mama coughed a deep, brutal hacking cough. She spit up blood into a white hanky already soaked with it. Francie, Cher, you home? She straightened her shoulders and showed her hunger, shoved her hunger aside. There was nothing to be done about it now, anyhow. I'm home, Mama. You wanting some tea? No, Cher. I used the last of it this morning. I'll be okay until tomorrow. Mama put a hand on Francie's cheek. How was the hunt? Francie dared not tell Mama about the snake. All good. Caught some fat ones for supper tomorrow night. She took the dress from Mama's lap. Get some rest now, you hear? I'll finish this velvet trimming. Tears welled in Mama's eyes. Francie, I want you to be here when Miss Claire comes to pick up the dresses tomorrow, so no dawdling at Madame Berger's, you hear? Straight to town and straight home. Yes, Mama. Francie liked Miss Claire. A true lady, she always wore the prettiest of the dresses Mama sewed. She smelled like magnolias, not swamp water and fish like Francie. And she showed kindness to the family. Much nicer than the old biddies at church who talked behind their fans and watched them with the suspicious eyes. With the dress done and hanging on the line, Francie crawled into bed next to Mama and listened to her ragged, shallow breaths. She put an arm around Mama's waist, snuggled against her back, and tried to ignore the rumbling in her tummy. She wanted to wonder about the meeting with Miss Claire tomorrow afternoon, but as soon as she closed her eyes, she fell into a deep, exhausted sleep. <laughs>